Did you know Switzerland is one of the best countries for starting a business and investing in startups? I was invited by the association Business Angels Switzerland to attend a private event for investors in Lausanne. There I met the participants and learned about Switzerland's advantages, the most promising and innovative sectors for investment, and how the association can help you invest in startups in Switzerland. We are the most established and oldest club in Switzerland, 26 years now and counting. And we do 20 dinner pitch meetings a year. So 10 in Zurich, 10 in Lausanne, some in Geneva, some in Lucerne as well, where six startup pitch. But for us, it's also the importance is on quality. So we only have three startups, max four, not more, because we also like to discuss to network because the focus point at BAS is really the community. It's not having startup marathons with 10 startups pitching and then you go home tired. For us it's three and then have nice discussions, work close together. Why do you invest in Switzerland? As you might know, we have the highest um, number of patents uh, registered in Switzerland per capita. So that's one of the reasons, but our members are mainly looking to invest in companies that have proximity to them because we also like to visit the startups, go to their lab, their office. It's often ETH, EPFL uh, spin-offs. So we like to go there and really do the due diligence in depth and then invest. What I have seen is a very vibrant market of, of, uh, of uh, well-thought startups with very, very good teams. Switzerland is a great place and in, in, in some topics it's one of the leading places like in financial services. The interest I find in Switzerland is the high level of education you find on the applied science universities as well as uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne and Zurich. So it's a quite a small place but you have a high density of uh, highly qualified uh, researchers and scientists who are coming out with very good ideas uh, which are very um, uh, suitable for innovation in uh, high added value fields. Microtechnology, watchmaking, medical technologies and so on. Switzerland is a stable economy. It's a stable currency and it's centrally located in Europe. And uh, with all the turbulence that we have around the world, this is a safe uh, investment. There's also a lot of innovation and support from the government and it's international. You find multilingual people, you find open culture. For us, it's important that in Switzerland for a lot of years, they have the same law the same law with companies, with the startups, and it's a good political environment, this is first. Second, and it's really important, uh, has two hubs of innovation that are demonstrating that are one of the hardest uh, hubs in Europe, the ETH and the Polytechnic in Lausanne, so Zurich and Lausanne. Another thing, it's uh, as a, a place where a lot of people are having a high networks, let's say. We have uh, more people interested in start investing in new companies that that finally creates more innovation in the same company and attracts more talent. The research centers, the, the framework it has be, that, 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 is, that is available for startups in Switzerland is, is cheaper than for, for startups in the US. I think what we have here, and, and this is, that goes across all industries, the, the, the density of the infrastructure and the support that is given or it's possible for stop is remarkable. If you look at, for example, uh, uh, Nobel prizes per uh, capita, or if you look at uh, universities per capita, or you look at PhDs per capita, you have an incredible density in this country that is, of course, a, a, a perfect terrain for development of, of innovation. Switzerland is a wonderful place actually to invest, not only because the R&D is uh, really dynamic, because the uh, uh, universities um, are, are at a very high level, and also there are many um, um, private banks and, uh, and clients. So it means that capital is also in Switzerland, that's very important. So you've got best of both worlds. Uh, about innovation and about capital. Have you already invested in some local companies? I'm invested in seven companies at the moment. Um, my idea is to 
have very much a, a diversified portfolio, a bit of everything. I used to be a banker, uh, so I need uh, uh, only to know what I'm investing about. I will never dig really very, very deep into uh, a molecule, uh, but I will uh, get really the, um, the investment rationale. Um, the risks, the financial risks, and also the uh, business model. These are the uh, key elements that I'm looking into. What are your profit industries? Mainly pharma, and I very much look into also fintechs coming from the, the banking industry. I have invested in Valtiris, so they have been really well, and this is mainly because of the team. I really like the team, I like the idea. It's a niche product, but very interesting. What they're doing? Um, so they are making a semi-transparent uh, parabolic mirror in greenhouses. So basically the plant get the light that it needs, the light wave that it needs, and the rest is reflected onto a solar cell. So you can also create your own energy in the greenhouse. What I have seen, I think, in, in financial services, they are very interesting, very, very interesting companies. And then in, in, in everything which has to do, or in a lot of things that have to do uh, with uh, B2B tech, so um, tech applied to, to, uh, to businesses and so on. Do you have any favorite companies already here? I am in conversations with, with uh, some very, very seed uh, uh, companies in the personal finance education area or in the uh, algorithmic trading area, where I think some people have very, very interesting, very, very interesting ideas that also fit very much with what I think might be successful. Myself, being uh, from the micro technology environment, I'm interested mostly in those, uh, that kind of startups. So implantable medical devices, drug delivery systems, all that requires a high amount of technology uh, for giving small products, but which are difficult to copy and to, to imitate. One of the startups where I think I will uh, have a, a good move, it's uh, called Eco Robotics. Uh, they do uh, robots for agriculture. It's not micro technology, but uh, they are based on systems, subsystems which are inte uh, artificial intelligence, uh, intelligent vision and so on, which are part of micro technology, but the whole systems are bigger. Hopefully this will be a, a successful story uh, for me. Food tech and ag tech. That's my sweet spot because food tech and ag tech touches upon all the um, criteria for sustainability. And for me, this is where I, I see the future. If we want to feed people, 10 billion people by 2050, this is where we need to invest now. I come from fintech and educational tech and super focused on B2C. And if it's possible, something related with finances, it's my sweet spot. But here I'm learning a lot about science uh, companies, science startups. There are many, many companies that, that inspired me. The surprising thing is that always at the beginning you think the idea is great and you're sure they'll be successful and they aren't. And the, on the other hand, you have organizations that at the beginning look a bit sh shady or shabby, I should say. And, and then suddenly they pivot, something happens, and they, they become an incredible uh, success story. And, Can you and, name one? Yes, I, I'm thinking of one which is Bioversus. It's one of the leading uh, organizations that try to reinvent and revamp the power of antibiotics. They have two, two molecules. They are in two clinical, different clinical phases and uh, the prospect is very, very, very uh, uh, positive. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing them be successful because they are really working on, the, on something that is fundamental for humanity. There's many interesting startups. It's, it's a hard choice, of course. of course. So let's find out what innovative ideas and investment opportunities were presented and considered by the business angels at this event. We are in Vivo and we develop a polymer platform that allows to carry molecules at the right place in your body with the right timing and the right dosage. We have different products on the pipeline and then the first one is for a gastroretentive system, so basically for localized release in the, in the stomach, but we also have other projects and products in different parts of the body. This will be on the market, we expect, in the next couple of years. So okay. two, two to three years maximum. Um, will be available at pharmacies that you can, you can go and just, just buy it off the shelf. It's gonna be uh, iron supplement, 
just working three times better than, than any other things you can just buy off the shelf in a pharmacy. So why we are here in Lausanne yes. at Buffs, uh, yes. I mean, uh, investors meeting and not somewhere in Basel by uh, Novartis already? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. So before getting to Novartis and knocking their door, we actually need to prove this technology works in human and that's why we are raising funds today to really test this. This is part of the strategy we have developed. So we start with the iron product, it is in a low regulated environment and allow us to really quickly there is the technology on one side and test it in human and validate it. So that's why with these products it's going to be fast, less than a year. And then we have other challenges which are a bit more complicated, would take longer. What are the advantages to run your startup here in Switzerland? Well, Switzerland is simply the, the pharma hub. Um, biggest pharma names are here. Um, the system is also supporting development in pharma. You have support from university, you have support from institutions, you have investors that also understand very well what is happening and how pharma is functioning and it's for us to, just the right place to be. Digital is an ETH spin-off um, that has permission to increase the fertilizer use efficiency of farmers. So with that we want to help farmers to save useless cost of fertilizer that could get lost that they apply uh, for nothing and we, at the same time ensure a high yield and lower the pollution and the greenhouse gas emission while taking care of their lands. It's a huge problem for farmers and until now, uh, um, even with all the experience they have, they could not solve that problem just for a very practical reason because they just don't have the information needed for uh, making good planning of the fertilizer. We develop um, simple measuring device that help the farmers to collect the data that they, they need really fast. And we have really good team of uh, expert software developers that uh, combine this data to make something really easy to interpret uh, for farmers. You have a soil sample that you put in. Okay. You close. Yeah. And then you just press start and that's all you need to do. And then the device will send the data to cloud where it's computed and in put into a model that gives you recommendations. Can I use it in my private house? <laughs> Anybody can use it. It's really easy. Um, the daughter of our co-founder could use it. She's like three, four, She's four, three, four. four. <laughs> yes. And we were thinking about like what we would say to an investor, even if they have no clue about agriculture. Well, if they want to make it, to have a big impact, it's it's uh, one of the the best field where they can invest because uh, now with the climate change, with all the increasing pollution, so we really need to, to find a solution for that. And for that you don't need any knowledge on the details because everyone is aware of the problems we have. How many devices do you want to produce if you have an investor? So we want to produce uh, like at the beginning only uh, over like uh, the first year 100 devices but then to quickly scale. And to distribute it only in Switzerland or in other countries as well? Where demand is. That can be used in everywhere in the world. Fusella is an ETH B2B hardware spin-off. So we have developed heating mats that are paper thin, flexible and can be adjusted to almost any shape and size. And with this, we want to revolutionize product heating. Product me heating meaning any kind of heated car seats or car interiors like door panels, but also heated clothing, mainly heated skiing gloves or heated shoes like safety boots or skiing boots. What they currently use are heating wires. And heating wires, they are only heating exactly there where the wire is, so locally. So this heat needs to be distributed. And for this, you need an upholstery layer. This makes everything thicker. Across this upholstery layer, there is also energy lost. So it's very energy inefficient. And where Qsella comes in with our paper thin and homogeneously heating mats is that we can make the heating of, for example, these skiing gloves more energy efficient because we don't need this upholstery layer. It already heats homogeneously by itself. It is currently in product development phase, so we have some prototypes. However, we do not yet have this so-called minimum viable product yet, so we're on the product development phase for this with our pilot project partners. So we have some partners, customers that also pay us, that develop together with us this finalized product, for example, for heated also airplane seats or for the heated safety shoes and so on. Why you decided to do your startup here? in Switzerland? First of all, we are from ETH Zurich, so ETH Zurich as well as Switzerland provides an amazing base for startups to 
initiate and then to grow. And the imp most important reasons for us is our um, value chain, or our fabrication value chain of our heating mats. Because it starts with our fibers that we have a patent pending on them, that's our invention. And then you have to kind of make um, paper out of it and then some more steps until the finalized heating mat. And this mainly this paper fabrication process, this is in the Dach region, so Germany, Switzerland and Austria, where they have the equipment that we can use to do it. So it doesn't make sense for us at the moment to go somewhere else. We will have, sub have subsidiaries at some point, for example, in the US. But that's the reason why we definitely stay in Switzerland and in Europe for the moment. What BAS can also provide is that they have an incredible know-how in, in their members because the people are there since sometimes already 15 years. So they have seen startups go, come and go. And so they know also when they put their expertise in a startup, where, how they can guide them. So we're not only looking for money as money, but also smart money, as it's called, that they can connect us with their network. For example, I had a really nice discussion with one of my um, table neighbors about upscaling, about the supply chain management and so on. So this is extremely important for us because we are in the team experts in material science, more in chemistry, but everything else we have to get the people around us to help us. Frank, how many years you are a member of Bass Club? Well, I barely dare say it, but I've been a member for the past 17 years since the inception of Bass in Lausanne, in the French-speaking part of Switzerland. So you are one of the billionaires with a track record of a great success stories well, investing in Swiss startups. Well, I wish, but you know, I don't think that the purpose at uh, at the onset of being a, a business angel is really to become a billionaire. I think that it has a lot more to do in uh, a willingness to share into the, the local uh, economic uh, environment and, and, uh, and support startups and support the entrepreneurs in their, in their endeavors. You know, I think there is much more than money into, into business angeling. Uh, and there's a lot of, of human issues. There's a lot of, of uh, uh, seeing the future, working with with people who are wonderful. And uh, if you can see beyond the money, I think you have a lot of more rewards. The advantage of BAS that you have together many competences of the members. So you will have people who are very strong in finance. You have people who are very strong in a given kind of technology or an industrial sector. So when you put the group together, uh, this makes a very qualified group to make the due diligence and then to make an evaluation of the startup. Uh, this gives security, relative security, because uh, the, the group is not binding. So if uh, there is a failure, uh, nobody would be accounted as responsible that uh, 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 for the others, but that, that, that doesn't matter. We are not professional investors. I think definitely there are a lot of uh, opportunity in being in a club. The leverage you get when you are part of a club and therefore the ticket size is bigger and the picking on the brains of the different members of the club to understand how to shape the opportunity, even financially, given giving options to the, to the startups is extremely interesting. I um, spoke on a panel with a, another member who was from BAS and they said, we need more female members, we need more diversity. And I said, this is a good opportunity for me to put my voice in, to bring more inclusive voices to BAS and therefore learn about the due diligence process that's being done here. The diversity is impressive. People come from, yeah, chemical industry, pharma, industry. Many of them are engineers. And it's, uh, yeah, to me, being a banker, a financial person, it's, it's uh, very different um, uh, opinions and way of looking at things. How to become a member of the club? We usually have uh, referrals from people who are already members. Often they bring guests and then we usually recommend to join one or two events to see what if they really like it. We have, I think, five or six guests tonight to see if they like it and then they can join. And we have a very simple structure, it's a flat fee, a yearly fee that you pay, which uh, allows you to go to all the events. You have access to our backend platform, Dealum, where you see all the 1,500 startups that have applied. And it's all included also the Bass Academy. So very simple fee, fee structure. And we're not looking to be the biggest in Switzerland, but to have the highest quality of investors. So they also get assessed by the board before they join. So far, we have not rejected anyone, but uh, yeah, the board approves them. And now, right now we have 80 members. 
To become a member of the club, do you need to be a resident of Switzerland or you can live in other countries as well? Do you accept foreigners? No, you just need to be able to attend a lot of the meetings because for us it's important to have the in-person meetings, not to be a digital pitch session, but to have the on-site meetings with the other people is very important. But it doesn't matter where you're located as long as you come to our uh, events. So, do you want to invest in startups in Switzerland? Please write in the comments. And if you would like to join the Association of Business Angels Switzerland, you will find all their contacts in the video description below. And like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss anything exciting in the future. That's all for today. See you in Switzerland.